This is the Singer Futura 900. We're going to run some different fabrics really fast for you. There is a slow setting and a fast setting. Depends on um, what you're working with and how much control you want to have. I'm going to run a whole bunch of different fabrics. I have cotton with a cording here. Heavy upholstery with um, a thick trim. Then let's see all kinds of stuff. I have um, batting and um, bedspread fabric here. This is heavy, heavy upholstery. This is denim. This is very thick velvet. This is vinyl. This is leather. This is uh, a faux silk and a stretch knit. Now I'm not going to change the feet and I'm not going to change the needle plate or anything like that or even the needle. So this is going to give a really good result but it'll be way better when you match your needle and your thread and everything to your specific project. Now I also have here webbing like when you put on buckles or something for a purse or a backpack. I have uh, velcro and I have stretch elastic so I will find something at the very end to run these on as well to tell you that it can do absolutely anything. It is a 1.3 amp motor which is super super strong. Most of the sewing machines these days are half that so this is a very strong motor. Now I've already run some of the cans and these here are the built-in stitches that are right up here. I want to tell you, and then I'm going to run just one at the very end for you as well. And I want to tell you just real quickly that there is something that's super important. Every machine has a couple little specialties. Um, this up here is the release button for when you're changing to a different stitch. You have to push it to release the mechanism inside so you can turn the handle. But here's the thing, right here you think you've gone far enough and it'll start to stick. So don't, don't think you've gone all the way. You want to go a little further and it clicks in and it stays there. That's how you know you can turn the dial at the top and by turning the dial there's an indicator here that goes for all the built-in stitches. So don't force it and don't think you hold it and turn it with the other hand. You, you put it down here and you click it and then you turn. You see if you can get it to release and there it just released, okay? Now at the very end, I know you can't see it 100% clearly right now, but you will in the photograph, um, there's a circle that indicates the cam. When you have the cam, you want the indicator to be here. Okay, so we're just going to run. We have three different needle positions, which is awesome. I have it in the left for just a little bit, and then I'm going to move it to the center. I have straight stitch. Now it's a little loud, and the camera's on the same table as the machine, so I'm sorry if it bounces a little bit. And I'm sorry it's kind of loud because it amplifies the motor. Okay, that's the cording. That was super fast, wasn't it? Now heavy upholstery. And we'll just keep on sewing. Fold it over, make four thicknesses of heavy upholstery. That's marine grade, very, very thick vinyl. Very, very thick leather from motorcycle chaps. It's suede on the back and very heavy. Now we're going to go right into very, very thin faux silk.
stretch knit. So I'll tell you what, let's get it to the top here. Let's put the release all the way over. Let's turn this to a zigzag. Make the width, gotta put some width into it, otherwise you don't get a zigzag. And that's a stretch knit. Perfect. It can handle any kind of fabric you put underneath it. Okay, so a couple more really quick things I wanna let you know. Always end with the needle up at the very highest part, so the thread is released from the bobbin. Um, let's see, I wanted to tell you, oh, right underneath here, everything is explained beautifully. I have the original manual right here, and uh, it's explained step by step, but there's a little trick here. When you put a cam in up here at the very top um, for a different design that is not built in, you need to do a couple of things according to the instructions. You need to put the release all the way over till it clicks all the way in. You need to turn the dial at the top until it goes all the way over to the circle that looks like a donut, which is to indicate the cam. Okay, you need to make sure you have a zigzag foot and the zigzag plate on. You can see I've already done some stitches here. Now you do have to play. Never start one of these fancy stitches on the actual project. Make sure you do a scratch sheet of paper and make sure you get exactly what you want because you can do the width and the length and get different things. So make sure you find what you want and keep the settings that way. Okay, so here's this little catch here. And it's explained in the manual. It's not really a catch, I just wanted to show you. When you put the cam in over here, and you have it over here like I already showed you, you pull this up and it brings the cam up so you can get it out. Now the cam has a circle in the middle but three little indentations there, and it lines up with three indentations here. Okay, that makes it spin. If it didn't have something to ride on, it wouldn't spin, so it has to have little parts that come out, and the cam has indentations to carry it. And then you put it in, okay? Now, if you want to start at the very beginning, like, of the pattern, like here's like this little big triangle, and then it goes little, big and little, like this, and say you want to start at the beginning, read the manual, and what it is, is there's an arrow here and an arrow here, and they have to line up. So to get them to line up to start at the beginning of the pattern, there's a, a slide silver button right here by the foot presser foot. You push it up, and it makes the needle not move and stitch, while you run the foot pedal and the arrows line up and that takes you to the beginning of the pattern. Okay, so then I can start there. Alright, what do I have here? I have centered needle. Okay, and I just need to play around with my width and everything. There you go.